This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening and welcome to the Brighton Central School District Board of Education Education Meeting for January 8th, 2019. Uh, our first board meeting of the new year and we welcome everybody and Happy New Year 2019. Uh, to begin this evening, as we always do, we offer the opportunity for public participation. Any members of the public that are here in attendance are uh, invited to address the board. You may make a statement. You may ask a question. Uh, we ask that uh, you raise your hand, be recognized, and move to the podium and give us your name and address. Uh, and uh, you're welcome to address any matter that is important to you. It doesn't have to be an agenda item this evening. Uh, we do ask that you keep your comments uh, brief. Uh, we have a three-minute time frame. If there's something that you would like to make a w the board aware of and you do, do not want to speak, you're happy to, we're happy to take a note from you this evening and leave that uh, for us. There are no cards over there on the table. Or you're also welcome, certainly, to contact us via email or to phone any board member at any point in time. So <clears throat> thank you very much for those in attendance. Is there anyone who would like to address the board before we begin the business portion of the meeting tonight? OK. Seeing we have a number of guests, which is fantastic, but no one wishes to speak at this point, so we will move forward. A motion, please, board, for approval of our agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. Moved by Marv, seconded by Karen. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, a motion, please, for approval of the minutes for our December 18th, 2018 business meeting. So moved. Second. A moved by Larry and seconded by Andrea. Any additions, corrections, deletions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We will begin uh, with principal reports this evening. We'll start out with the report from Council Rock Elementary School. And Principal Matt Tabin. Welcome, sir. Hello, and Happy New Year. Same to you. So, there's a picture of the snow that hopefully is going to come someday. Um, <laughs> so right before break, we had our Stay in Your PJs and Read Day. Um, thanks to Adele Moltzkovicius, our librarian, for um, arranging so many wonderful guest speakers. Many of you are here, actually. So thanks to the board members who are able to come. Dr. McGowan is up there reading to his daughter's class. class. Yeah, say not PJs. No oh. Council Rock spirit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was a great day, kind of a nice way to wind into the holiday break and keep everyone kind of calm before that storm. So uh, in December, we also hosted several visitors from Israel. Um, Mrs. Banbury's second grade class actually has a classroom connection with our uh, sister school, uh, the Amit School in Modine. And um, the teacher that she's working with was there for three or four days um, out of, and they presented this beautiful quilt that the class had created together. Um, you can't really see it, but each child uh, illustrated with um, a friendship, a picture of something around friendship or connectedness, and then they chose words, and then um, there actually are several families in her class that speak Hebrew, so they went home and they wrote in Hebrew the English word and then put it all together and they sent that back with her. Um, Kathy will be traveling to Israel over February break with the contingency and doing a lot of activities over there. I was just talking with her about that today. So just a great experience for our kids um, and for Kathy too. So thanks for supporting that. Uh, in December, my staff actually participated in their own learning, uh, doing a little bit more extensive understanding of what Play Workshop looks like. So for this meeting, we actually read, they actually participated in a Play Workshop, and they, we read um, a book called The Rabbit Listened, and um, then they either participated in a dramatic play area, a building play area, and the one I don't have pictured is an artistic play area where we painted. So um, just seeing a little bit of what the kids experience when uh, they learn through play. We had, um, this also was on PJ Day, but it was the last day, two of our class, second grade classrooms um, participated in the breakout EDU. Um, and what that is, is if you picture kind of a uh, escape room, um, so you have all these different uh, locks and suitcases that you lock clues in and the kids have to work together. You can make it ap applicable to any 
uh, subject matter. So these two teachers, Mrs. Rhodes and Mrs. Ackerman, actually uh, did it with states of matter because they were studying solids, liquids, and gases. And the coolest part is this, this picture you can't really see well. They had a key in an ice block and the kids had to figure out how to get the key out of there and they immediately went and started running under hot water to get the key out to be able to then open. I have never seen kids the day before break more engaged and learning and sharing what they were learning. So it was really, really great. Thanks to the high school for loaning us um, their breakout EDU uh, cases, but we have ordered them for Council Rock so that we can start to use them across the board there. Um, our art teacher, uh, the fabulous Miss Lisa, uh, Mrs. Jordan, uh, several of our students were featured in a local art magazine called The Magic Dragon. So I just thought it was so cool. We see it all here and we comment it all the time. Um, but this is all of our um, things from the author visit. So just really cool to have our, our students featured in the local art magazine. And then uh, just before break and then after break, uh, they started learning mindfulness and meditation in PE. This is a new uh, special thing that Mrs. Cooper used. We had a community member, actually a grandma from um, Council Rock, and she read a book um, about uh, pig, a pig who meditates and taught the kids about the power of meditation and then I actually joined them and we meditated and meditated they were able to do it for a minute and then a minute and a half and then two minutes and they took it really seriously um, this is Mrs. Linton's class and we meditated so I spent the half hour with them it was really awesome coming up we've got our toy and book drive right now happening uh, and it probably will extend into next week because we didn't have a ton of things so we're going to publicize it a little bit more uh, Thursday the 17th is our incoming fresh uh, kindergarten or information night um, and it's at 7 o'clock in the Council Rock Auditorium. No school on Martin Luther King Day and uh, Thursday, actually it's Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday the 30th. It is wrong on my PowerPoint and on the calendar <coughs> so I'm confusing matters. Wednesday the 30th PTSA meeting with the principal and we're finalizing what they're going to be doing is reaching out to a whole bunch of outside agencies and activities, um, so dance and everything you could get our level of kids involved in and having representation there for parents to be able to access it's something as they've been asking what can PTSA provide for them. New families have said we just want to know how do you sign up for Little League, how do you sign up for all of those things. So not just spring things, they're kind of try to cast the, the net wide and get a, a lot of representation there. So we're hoping to have a lot of people come and take advantage of that. Any questions? Super. Thank you very much, man. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll move up to uh, French Road Elementary School and Allison Rio. Hello, Happy New Year, Happy everyone who I haven't seen yet. We had a busy December at French Road. It was concert time. We had lots of concerts, uh, red band, blue band, fifth grade chorus. We have more coming up. As usual, the kids did an amazing job. They looked great. Um, it's definitely awesome listening to them from fourth graders to fifth graders and how much they grow, but they look fabulous. We had our new student pizza parties in December celebrating our kids who are new to French Road. And um, Ms. Falinski did a great job organizing that, playing some games, connecting kids after their time they spent together. And actually, since I put this in, we've had um, nine additional students join us at French Road just after the new year. <laughs> so we're up to 60 new students this year at French Road. Um, we were busy after the new year. We have lots of new faces just this week here with us. So We had PJs and popcorn at the book fair. We had a really successful book fair um, in December. Uh, very um, high turnout from families. We hosted it the same night as a concert so families could come and check out some books and get some PJs and popcorn and a story before the concert if they wanted to. And that was really awesome. PTSA also held a family game night at Barnes and Noble for the first time after they did a thought exchange to get some feedback around what might um, families be interested in, in addition to some of the things we already do, like the picnic and movie night. And this came up as a hot topic. So stay tuned for more things from PTSA, um, looking at possibly um, other activities, some sort of arts and crafts events for families to get together and just hang out. We've been having fun with Fun Food Fridays at Fres this year, and two of the items I put on there that we've tried this year are dates and seaweed chips. So the kids have been really interested in these unique items. 
So far, so good. Everything that I like eating, so that was good. Um, <laughs> this is an old picture from the end of last year of our pickles and olives, and you can see they dressed accordingly for the picture. Our PTSA <laughs> Our fifth graders have iPads in all of their classrooms now. So we've gone from surfaces to iPads. The kids have been doing awesome with the transition. These are a few pictures from Ms. Rauscher's class working on research project for social studies. And we've had a great transition just before uh, winter break. So kids are really excited about that. Our student council is just kicked off in December. And again, we will meet this week we have our safety patrol up and running by Monday. We have some great star quality uh, projects happening around the building, and the kids are really excited about that. So I'll post pictures in the months to come. And also, right after break, our 21st century furniture arrived in four of our classrooms at French Road, Ms. Kozoff, Mrs. Romano, Mrs. Cannon, and Mrs. McDonough. And here are just a few pictures I grabbed from Mrs. McDonough's class of the kids. She was like, oh, we're not ready yet. We have more setting up to do, but I wanted to share because what a huge difference already. Just went in there the first day after break and the kids were so excited um, and just, you know, jumped right in to their new furniture and classroom. So this is only a day in and it already looks like they've been in there for a while. We had a visit from Glenn Johnson from WAM 13 to our NL class to talk about weather after their science unit and um, kind of showed the kids how weather reports are made and how meteorologists work and where they get their information from and um, the kids were really interested in that. And a picture of our festive Fres faculty just before break, just because it's a great picture of the faculty. We had an awesome week, did lots of things with faculty in addition to our kids to try and get them to remain excited and hopeful to get to break week which we had a lot of fun, they were great. So this is just one of the pictures from that. We have some upcoming events. This week we start roller skating again for the winter with our fifth grade on Thursday and Friday after school. Next week we have our PTSA meeting with the principal and our mental health team at French Road will be there to talk about second step curriculum and share with families the work we've been doing at French Road this year and kind of give a little bit more information about what that looks like. Fourth grade roller skating coming up next week along with our fourth grade chorus concert on the 17th. No school for Martin Luther King Day. Then we have our third grade roller skating. We have a PTSA family movie night on January 31st. And this one will be pretty cool because all of the kids at French Road are listening to Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's library as a read aloud. And we have some connections with kids to talk about the book at home. And then we're gonna show the movie on movie night. And Mr. McVeigh, our librarian, will be there to give a little book talk and read an excerpt from the book before we start our movie. So hopefully we'll have lots of excited kids there because they've been reading the book. Our math team kicks off very soon in February and then more concerts coming our way from the fourth grade. And that's it for us. Great. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate the update. Uh, next we'll move to 12 Corners Middle School and Principal Rob Thomas. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy can't wait to watch this show because I can't really remember what we did last month, <laughs> let alone last week. Uh, but we were off to a great start for the new year. Uh, before the uh, holiday break, our eighth graders were docents at the Memorial Art Gallery as part of their eighth grade English unit and their read of OK for Now. It's a fantastic family event and a lot of fun for everyone that was able to participate. <coughs> Uh, we also had the visitors from, from Modine, Israel. Uh, they toured our building. They talked with the students in our classroom. And we're just on our first steps of developing a relationship with the middle school in Israel. And we're really looking forward to uh, a future uh, correspondence and collegial work with the middle school. In fact, this just in, this morning, uh, we had our International Friendship Club Skype with the students in Israel in Mrs. Cassettos' class. Uh, we get to school early to do this, and they stay late so that the time difference can be accommodated for. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, future uh, plans. Related to technology and all the great things that it offers, like Skyping, our PTSA meeting with the principal in December featured technology as a tool for instruction and seven different teachers presented on seven different topics. Very well received, and it's so interesting to listen to all the ways they're using technology to enhance learning, uh, not just replace a different tool, but to really uh, make it a stronger, 
a more engaging and meaningful uh, use of instruction. Uh, the student activities have been very busy throughout December and as we start off the month of January with athletics, uh, there's something in the gym every afternoon. We've had our academic challenge bowl compete and our chess team most recently at McQuaid will also be hosting a meet uh, pretty soon. And we had four students uh, compete or uh, were recognized in the five by seven art contest at the uh, memorial or at our library here in Brighton. And those four students were all award winners. Uh, the technology classes are busy making their CO2 cars, and this is really fun to see if you can stop by the technology classrooms and look at all the different designs the students come up with for aerodynamics and just for their own uh, interests and, and their art form. Uh, the German classes made gingerbread houses before the break and were rated and voted on. That was my favorite, the one I took a picture of. And before the holidays, our three band directors, Kendra Lamb, Dave Myers, and Sarah Fisher, along with a lot of other students who play the tuba only, participated in a concert at the East <laughs> Theater. A huge, I think, over 200 tuba players. They play holiday music before the break. Uh, I always, <laughs> I'd like to remind everyone about Lost and Found in the lower atrium at our middle school. Something we've collected more this year than most years. We're already on our third round of trying to get it back in the hands of the students before we make a generous donation to a, a, a needy group in the area. Uh, so please, if you're missing anything at home, even if you don't think you're missing anything, come by the middle school. Sometimes I found my own stuff in that pile. So please take a look. A lot of upcoming events. Our, our ski and snowboard club has started. Uh, last Saturday, and hopefully we get a little bit more snow for them, but the trails were open. We have a lot of concerts coming up. Uh, the, we host the Middle School Junior High Solo Festival on the 18th and the 19th, and we have uh, the 8th grade parent orientation coming up at the high school for the parents of 8th graders near the end of January. I'm sure Dr. Hall will talk more about that. Uh, and that's it from the middle school. Thank you very Thanks, much, Rob. Appreciate the update. And uh, concluding our principal reports this evening, Dr. Tom Hall and Brighton High School. Thank you. So we had the snow back in November for Thanksgiving, but obviously that's all gone now. But happy 2019. It's great to be back. Thank you. Um, just before the break uh, on one of our early release days, we had very shortened classes, 20 minutes, which aren't always the most productive times, but people found a variety of ways to make that time go by. But it allowed our teachers in the afternoon to have a tech fest where all of the faculty signed up for at least two sessions for the afternoon. Anything you can imagine about technology, learning Schoology, um, various app programs, things that they're using uh, with students, uh, some of the teachers figuring out what the new laptops are going to be like if they're juniors and seniors who will have laptops going into next year, the juniors will, followed by the seniors. We're probably going to follow up. The feedback was so positive. I want to thank Mike Pincelli and the tech team for in the building to putting those items together with Daniel Edmonds and uh, Mike Leaner's help. But it was so positive that we're going to do that again as part of our conference day in April. So you know, putting that technology to use. Um, something very special we've had, if you haven't been at the high school recently to go in the counseling office, um, we have more kids hanging out there now than ever before, which I guess is a, it's a good thing. Uh, but we renovated the entire counseling area. And part of the renovation came from a donation from the Beato family. Um, they had children that came through um, the high school. Uh, one of their sons passed away um, probably five years ago now, um, graduated Brighton, and they made a significant donation to the counseling department because their son David was um, always someone who visited the counseling area, but he said he found safe, secure, and between the artwork and the furniture from at one end to the other, it made it a, a really nice atmosphere. There's no more desks in there or you know, secretary, clerical desks that are part of where the old assistant principal office was. It completely changed. So if you haven't been over there recently, please come in. Um, but they were with us just before the holidays, and uh, it's nice to celebrate with them. And the students, you know, it's been absolutely a great place to be. So hopefully if any of them hang out there, it's good. Um, our own annual holiday basket collection, we did 30 <coughs> holiday bags this year that went to various families in the area right in our local Brighton area. One of the big events of January is our College and Career Night. This will be the fourth uh, annual College Career Night. It's getting better every year. This year we're actually inviting um, 
It's open invitation to any family uh, with 9th, 10th, or 11th grade students. We we're gearing it just towards mainly 10th and 11th, and maybe just the parents. Now we've invited the students, and now it's pretty much students and parents will make room, and there's uh, they can sign up for a variety of sessions. Anything you can imagine, going all the way to the very bottom. If you're just you have no idea what you want to do, and you might want to do a gap year, undeclared, unconcerned, that's fine. There's a presentation on that. Um, a variety of colleges will be there to talk about not only. Um, you know, two-year schools, four-year schools, uh, very hard um, Ivy League type schools, uh, music, art, um, performance schools. There'll be there'll be presentations pretty much on anything, athletic type scholarships, and also the academies. So if you're looking for something, and even if you don't know where you your child doesn't know really what they want to do, if you start going now, you can catch a couple each year. Um, it's very informative. Had a lot of positive feedback. And one of the new changes we're going to have this year, there'll be a student panel of uh, graduates who are home right now still. They're almost all ready to go back. They're going to talk about their first year at college, some second or third year, and some who are just went off into the work world. Uh, we have a variety of students and parents who will be on the panel. That will start at 6 o'clock in the auditorium, and then 6.40 the sessions begin. Um, we have our Martin Luther King Assembly coming up on January 18th. I know BSU has been planning and putting together a lot for this. I don't want to give away all their guest speakers, but they're having a variety of speakers come um, uh, to inspire, hopefully, our students to get involved, engaged, and, and advocate for the community and uh, causes. And that will take place on Friday the 18th. You're welcome to come, 745 in the auditorium. Midterm week is Tuesday. Starts on the 22nd through the 25th. We have our PTSA meeting on the 29th, talking about next year's program planning. Uh, eighth grade parent night, yes, it will be on the 24th. The class of 2023 will be welcoming the class of 2023 to Brighton High School next fall, which sounds incredible. Um, a lot of events happening throughout the month of January. And on the 25th, as the market period ends, I know Tula, who's our board rep, uh, spoke about our uh, Culture, Climate, Equity, and Diversity Committee um, student leadership team. And we'll be meeting and having a, a, about a two and a half hour luncheon uh, with them on the Friday afternoon to get ready for our student survey that we're preparing for the spring. So that's happening on the 25th. Excited about that. More to come at our next report. So, any questions? Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much, Tom, for the update. We appreciate it. And, uh, as we always say, we get into the new year, and it's like nothing was ever left behind. We carry it all with us and fully racing toward uh, toward year end, really. But next up tonight, we have it's a time of the year where we receive updates and recommendations uh, around our blueprint plan and blueprint planning process. And so I welcome Dr. Debbie Baker, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction. Thank you. I think I just actually want to start tonight by thanking the Board of Education for providing us. Um, Carolyn, myself, Lou, and, and really all the people that we represent that are doing this hard work with the forum to share with you all of the great work that's going on um, across the district in service to the blueprint. I know when we started um, with this blueprint work a few years ago, um, you know, the goal was to provide some direction for the district and having been in the district, I won't tell you how long, but anyway, I can tell you that I really feel never has there been a time when we have been so kind of focused on um, really positive work. So I'm going to start this tonight um, giving you, providing you with updates on the uh, Wellness Committee and all the work that's being done around that. Um, first, you may have remembered um, through various the community forums and whatnot, um, a mention of the co-vitality. Co-vitality is a, in, a sense, in essence, a health survey that we are now administering to students in fourth, sixth, and tenth grade. The purpose of this is really to identify kids for who may have social emotional needs that we haven't through our own um, resources and current practices identified. Um, the idea being that, as you know, I think all of you all will agree, any time that we can identify a student who really is in need of some additional support, 
um, in order to be academically su successful, um, it's, it's imperative that we do so. And so we decided this year, um, Carolyn and her committee um, researched uh, various tools and came up with uh, co-vitality. As I said, we're piloting that. And then next week, we've just finished kind of that first round. And next week, she'll be working with her team to analyze that initial um, survey results and see what the data, um, what the data glean at that time. Second step, Allison mentioned, is a curriculum that, again, we're piloting in kindergarten through fifth grade, and it's almost in direct relationship to the social-emotional pieces that the co-vitality potentially will help us to identify. What second step is, is what we consider to be a tier one intervention in that all students are provided with access to this curriculum. Um, right now it's being taught by our counseling staff. They go into each one of our classrooms for about 30 minutes a cycle um, and look at, I mean, I'm sorry, and work with students and helping them to learn how to empathize, handle problems, work with each, with each other in an attempt to be somewhat proactive, if you will, um, and um, address some of those social needs that happen kind of on a daily basis within the classroom. We're hoping in the spring to be able to pilot this in a few classrooms at TCMS, and then collectively you'll be hearing more in the future about um, some restorative practices that we are bringing on board, and it's marrying the two, how to second step um, really work with those restorative practices in kind of addressing those whole needs of our students. And then again, um, I know Carolyn mentioned this at her last update and just wanted to reiterate um, the mental health, the additional mental health services that we're providing for students um, this year. Um, first, we have um, contracted with Genesee Mental Health and um, in particular Christine Kristen Hahi, and Kristen works directly with students to provide counseling support, along with Sue Ellen Trumbull and Brian Head from the Genesee Mental Health staff. I'm really looking to provide that next layer of mental health support that previously we weren't able to provide for students. In addition to that, I'm working to connect those students with perhaps outside agencies when that is um, when that's called for. Can I ask you a question? Just you sure can. Um, Sorry to interrupt, but I, okay. I remember uh, Carolyn had done her update to us, and, and, and we had the folks here actually from uh, the two different outside providers, which is fantastic. I mean, I think that program, and we've talked about it for a long period of time and bringing those folks in. So the understanding is that that's going well so far, very well, right? And I, I wondered, though, and I forgot to ask that night with Carolyn, communication to families as far as the availability of what we now offer. I know the principals have made note of it in their weekly updates a couple of different times, I think. Have we, um, are we doing, are we planning an ongoing communicating to families as to those services available? Sure, sure. Well, I don't want to speak you know, for Carolyn, yeah. but I could only um, surmise that yes. Okay. Um, I know that the team itself, the mental health steering committee, um, is, you know, making various presentations, PTSAs, et cetera, and I would imagine, and maybe I'll kind of look to the principals, that they in, are also, through the, their, our counseling staff, doing those direct, in, you know, individual okay. contacts to parents. I just wondered, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, no, no, no. obviously, but I'm fine. what had happened, I realized when I saw the slide, I had forgotten to ask her, yeah. uh, it sounded like we are in a great position with our professionals, our staff, recognizing and helping a child and a family. But I wondered if a message was clearly uh, getting to parents who may want to more proactively. You know, I think that's a great question yeah. that I'll kind of forward okay. on to Carolyn and right. maybe she can follow we up can with follow you. Up um, I do know, you know, again, speaking from my perception, is that I think this really has elevated the level of direct services that mm -hmm. we've been able to provide to yeah. students that we've never been able to provide. And, you know, I think, again, the Board of Education over the last couple of years has heard about this increased um, need within our community, and we're very fortunate that the Board has supported um, you know, the, the ability for us to provide. I mean, and having these um, staff in-house really makes a world of difference because you and I both know, right? You're going to refer somebody and they may or may not make the right. call. You know, time gets in the way, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, I think it's been great and I think that's probably contributed to the success of this program. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Great.
All right, so now I'm going to move on to kind of my own wheelhouse, which is rigorous coursework. Um, again, kind of thinking about what we've been doing, what we, what are some of the systems that we've put in place. I mentioned to you in a previous um, presentation that there's a subcommittee of um, curriculum council that's really looking at codifying, if you will, non-academic behaviors. Part of the recommendation coming out of um, curriculum council a couple of years ago, the grading committee, was that we make sure that we do that so that um, on our report card, the achievement um, that's reflected actually is reflective of what a child can know, knows and is able to do. But we also recognize the importance of those social aspects, those effort, if you will, types of aspects. And so we need to make sure that we're reflecting both and providing both students and parents with information about that. And so Julie Kopp is leading up that group with the idea being towards the end of the year we'll be coming to the board with a recommendation perhaps to adopt those district-wide. Um, Council Rock and French Road are actively um, working on their report card systems as we speak and are kind of waiting in bay for this work to be completed so they can utilize that. And I know I've been working with Rob and Tom um, very closely on thinking about not only in general our grading practices, I think Rob has shared with you some of the work that's happening at the middle school um, around grading and how we're kind of shifting the way we think about grading, but also Tom is heading up uh, a group um, looking at homework specifically and you know what the role what role homework plays um, within the learning process and so again those specific recommendations this evening um, work that's ongoing but really feel like we're going to have something for you by the end of the year um, the the point of pride that I think I'm the most excited about is this ongoing work that we've been doing around culturally responsive curriculum I mean, we've been hearing, it's, it's really a meeting of the planets, if you will. You know, you've got the Diversity and Equity Committee working on um, issues um, surrounding, you know, family engagement and hiring practices and how we actually provide, um, you know, our instruction to our students. You've got um, the leadership team looking at you know, disciplinary practices, and now you've got curriculum council looking at how we meet the needs of a culturally diverse student population. Um, I have to say that myself personally, I've done a ton of learning, a ton of thinking about this. Um, I, I certainly haven't arrived in this journey, but feel like um, I'm pretty excited about the conversations that we've been having, and more importantly, about what that might do with regards to the implications to our curriculum design and our, and our instructional practices. And so again, a little premature. But towards the end of the year, expect this particular committee to come to the board with some recommendations around implementation um, considerations for this work. And then I love the fact that Rob highlighted um, some of the positive work that's going on at the middle school um, with respect to technology. And Allison also mentioned the iPad implementation. We are at a point right now where we're actually, after you know a few years of really providing increased access to our students, we're seeing, seeing some incredible work. And I feel like you know the feedback that I've gotten from both teachers and parents, we're starting to see the, the fruits of that labor. And so in the world of technology, we're going to continue to build out um, our one-to-one -one program. I think Tom mentioned that. Um, ensuring that all both the teachers and the students have the necessary skills, right, to utilize the technology because that certainly is um, an important part of all of this. We're going to shift our professional development. In the past, um, we really have focused on kind of technology for the sake of technology. And now we realize because of some things that happened last summer that we need to do a complete well, a complete but subtle shift towards, you know what, it's about teaching. And more importantly, at the end of the day, it's about learning. And how does technology inform that? And what can we do with the technology that perhaps enhances that learning and provides students with opportunities that they wouldn't have um, outside of that? And so our focus of our summer professional development is really going to be about positive teaching. And much of the same, you know, kind of Rob gave you a few of the examples, you know, bringing in some of our teachers who were doing phenomenal work and providing them with forums to share because we know that our teachers really learn best from each other. And then again, um, Mike Leaner is heading up a, a, a curriculum council subcommittee around assessing the impact. So again, we kind of, we, we, you know, we, we've gone down this road, we've invested a lot, and people have invested time and resources. Now is, is it making a difference? Anecdotally, we can say it, it is, but we want Mike and his group to figure out how to quantitatively perhaps help us learn that as well. 
and I'm going to turn it over to Lou. Thank you very much, Debbie. Good evening. And specific to school safety, uh, you can see our, our charge at, at the top, provide continuous monitoring of safety and, safe, security and safety procedures. And we say continuous, it, it is continuous. This is something that's always on our mind, on the principal's mind. Every meeting we're talking about risks, threats, our procedures. Um, at the same time, we're trying to balance that against maintaining um, a comfortable, welcoming environment. So specific strategies that have been talked about and planned for, improve the effectiveness of our building safety teams and refine response to the situational annexes. So I shared at the last meeting blueprint update of the work that was done over the summer by led by our principals and our director of safety and security. And we're looking at that and, and we'd like to be able to adopt a model more similar to what the high school has, where the principal is being so busy during the, the course of the day in meetings and classrooms, giving them a second set of eyes to be able to respond to the different situational annexes. We have um, security at our point of entries, and that's serving one function, but having that second set of eyes at each of our three buildings, the middle school, French Road, excuse me, and Council Rock, and especially during the construction time, um, would allow us to implement our and uh, react to any type of um, situation in a more timely manner, again, with the goal of getting the first responders there as, as quickly and efficiently as possible. Secondly, the continue the development of the threat assessment tools and techniques. Again, each of our buildings have processes to do that risk assessment. Um, it's been kind of homegrown. We've been trying to tailor it towards the guidance that's been put forth. There is more guidance coming, coming out. In fact, Chief Henderson just yesterday invited our team to uh, an FBI-hosted um, event that talks about threats um, and protocols and, and identifying different threats. So we'd like to work towards formalizing those um, existing processes and procedures and adopting more formal, um, more formal uh, standards, I guess, if you say, if that's the right term. And then our ongoing actions, again, it's, it's continuous. The monitoring and implementing of the evolving guidance. Uh, the state and federal agencies are looking out um, different uh, response to, uh, to situations, and they're providing guidance. But nothing formal is coming out from New York State and the state police yet. Uh, we're awaiting that, and we'll be able to respond to that once it, uh, once it comes down, and certainly in partnership with our first responders, uh, fire police, and, uh, and ambulance. And then what's also ongoing is the development of a capital plan that addresses safety, security, and accessibility concerns brought forth by all the stakeholders. Uh, the example that we talked about uh, at the last meeting was the uh, TCMS traffic concerns. How can we uh, adopt a capital plan that's addressing those um, and certainly not just waiting for capital, what procedurally should we be doing to mitigate those risks until we can have that capital investment. So that's what's going on in the, in the world of uh, school safety. Any questions? Thank you for the update, you. Lou. We appreciate that. Thank you very much uh, for uh, everyone's participation and the updates <coughs> to our blueprint. Uh, uh, just a reminder to folks who may be watching us, uh, the blueprint planning process is our strategic planning process. All of that material, uh, and that is reviewed in an ongoing way and approved over the summer. It's all listed on the school district website and all of the updated information and, and, and events that occur during the year uh, that's populated during the year so that the material is kept up to date. Uh, next up this evening, it's, it's really a great, great night and, and we're really looking forward to this next update. Uh, I welcome Lou back uh, for an update on our Brighton Facilities Improvement Plan and also the anticipated approval of our construction uh, contracts involving Council Rock and the rebuild of that school. Lou. Great. Thanks. So what the board is asked to consider tonight is the contract awards for specific to the Council Rock project. So that's the addition and the renovation of, of Council Rock. Just drawing back to when we were presenting this to the community, this is the project scope that's encompassed in the bids that are uh, for the board's consideration tonight. So I'm just going forward. This is exactly from, um, from the pre-referendum presentations to the community. Um, and it's evidence that we're, we're doing what we said we were going to do, uh, being uh, considerate of, of our fiduciary responsibility and honoring the tax impact that was put before the voters. So creating a 21st century learning environment, um, you'll see that throughout the design. You've seen some of the pictures in the, in the model. The addition of 12 uh, classrooms, which will accommodate full-day kindergarten. 
Those will not be kindergarten classrooms, but they will be additional instructional space that will accommodate our K through full day K through second grade. So it does provide some relief to the existing um, space concerns that, that Matt and his team deal with on a daily basis. It does provide a more secure single point of entry uh, in main office addition, Cre uh, creates a nurse's suite addition, again, for the increased enrollment that will be in the building. Uh, and we're doing that by um, repurposing the auditorium right now, creating a cafetorium type space, making um, more um, usable library space using the big vaulted ceilings and additional support service space. So this is the entire scope, uh, expanding the site um, and, and the parking as well as lighting and trying to address all a comprehensive uh, full day K um, primary school through to second grade primary school program. So to your fiduciary responsibility, just quickly where we were at referendum. And again, this is based on the, the tax impact. The $144 was presented throughout the presentation of the project, and that considered the aidability of the projects within this column. So our initial budget for Council Rock was $24.1 million. You could see the budgets at each of the different schools, but we had a construction budget of $48.2 million. As we've been monitoring and designing the project uh, in uh, response to the tariffs and labor shortages of late, we came to the board um, with the expectation that we were trending over budget and we outlined a, a financing plan to be able to honor that tax impact that, that we believe is so important and what the voters considered on May 17th of 2017. Fortunately, the bids came in for Council Rock much lower than what was projected. It's still over the referendum budget uh, by about $1.4 million. However, what the Board of Education did at June 30th of 2018, we transferred some um, surplus to the capital project, so we we're able to put additional cash, cash contributions to Council Rock. So we're still honoring that tax impact based on the aidability of the Council Rock project. Does that make sense? Sure. So overall, and then if the bids come in as projected for the other schools, for the high school, middle school, French Road, and where bids came in for phase one, which was the turf field, roof work, and uh, the door project, we anticipate that our construction costs will actually be less than what, what they were projected to be at the point of referendum. And that's because some of the scope, uh, specifically at the middle school, needed to be deferred. We didn't have a, a great design to address the auditorium concerns. And what we've identified through the uh, strategic planning process and schematic design is that it really needs additional square footage, which we did not have authorization for. So that'll be a project that we'll be putting forth in our 10-year plan. Uh, and it's similar to what we presented when we were uh, doing our, our start time work and the facilities impact for changing uh, start times. So we'll revisit that as part of that, part of that capital plan. So as of right now, depending on uh, how bids come in at the um, second, second portion at high school, middle school, and French Road, uh, we are trending under budget by 750000 So it's with confidence that I recommend these awards. Uh, I think we're able to do what we said we were going to do. It includes uh, one of the, what I consider to be an important scope item uh, that was initially value engineered out, and that's the um, um, courtyard. 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 Thank you. Um, so that's one of the alter alternates that um, that is being recommended. I, I think we have capacity to do it because there's so much um, site implications for this with the addition of the building. I think that could be a valuable learning space and hopefully our teachers and our community will, will think so as well. So all the alternates do consider about a million dollars worth of value engineered items, um, but this, um, the results of the bid do allow us with confidence to uh, re-recommend that the courtyard is part of the project. Great. Fantastic. Uh, any questions of Lou? Does anybody? Sure. Lou, I, uh, I would say on behalf of the board, um, before we move into approval on the contract area, um, first of all, the material that you're presenting to the public tonight obviously has been shared with us previously. And um, we're proud to have Larry as our representative for the board on the, uh, uh, the owner, architect, construction manager committee, and you folks meet <laughs> all the time right now. And have been since uh, really going back to uh, referendum approval just about. Uh, I, I think uh, I want to commend you on behalf of the board and also our uh, construction manager, 
our architects, uh, all the folks that have been involved with this. We utilize a number of outside folks in regard to financing and estimating and working with state education department. I think to be able to be in a position right now to deliver what we said we would do a year and a half ago and set us on the right track for the full K-12 facility plan, uh, this is a tremendous accomplishment. And you know, we have to be vigilant. Uh, the occurrences that we know that have occurred around us with regard to municipal construction, because of all the factors that you mentioned, uh, have not been great for a number of school districts around us and public entities who've gone out to bid. So for all of the folks who've worked on this to get this package together and out to bid and have it come in to where it is to set us up for the <coughs> phasing that we talked about over a 5, 10, and 15 year period is just a tremendous situation that we start from. So, okay. so thank you very much. I would like add, there were a number gratitude. of days that Lou took us through line item by line item reviews in order to be accountable to the taxpayers to say, why are we doing this? We're going to have to back this off. And we just sat through a couple of hours on different sessions going, you know, we're expecting to hit this number. All of it's an estimate until you get the bids back, right? So there is a right. piece that you can't forecast. But a tremendous amount of very specific, focused work by Luke. Going, we're, you know, we're going to be true to the taxpayers here. So I give him a ton of credit for that. I appreciate that. And I also want to thank Matt. He's been a great partner in this. He's been certainly a strong advocate for his program, and he's identified what he needs to run an effective primary school. But he's also been very, very considerate of, of the financial implications of the project and said, you know, we, we don't need this. These are some design elements that aren't essential to our program. And he was a big part of that value engineering um, where we identified well over a million dollars worth of potential potential cuts. So it's it's a good a, point. The, I, I, I don't want to forget that either. Uh, our, our, this whole thing started with our building committee and our staff and, and Matt, his leadership and our facilities folks. Uh, everyone uh, deserves a really uh, a great round of applause on that because we are where we are because of all the groundwork that goes back a number of years now. Yeah, you touched on the facilities team has come up with a bunch of creative ideas. We've had some challenges. Though. There's been two or three of those guys, John, Kevin, a bunch of those guys at the table going, what about if we do this? What about if we do this? So a huge part of that whole piece as well. Great, yeah. Just great people to work with. So this is the great news. The next three years are going to be challenging as we build it. <laughs> so well, just remember what we're getting at the end of it through these next three years. The and challenges, but uh, that's the beauty of it, starting where we are with great people on board and our outside folks uh, that we're working with, the team that we have assembled, uh, we'll, we'll get through this. It's, it's not, as we talked about, I believe it was our last meeting when we discussed, you know, it's like renovating your entire house while you're living in it. Um, but it's been through that project and those projects. It's not, it's not fun and games. So, Matt and I will Matt, look a lot different in September much. of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Continue great success over there. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lou. Appreciate it. Uh, with all of that, folks, we will. I will entertain a motion, please, to approve uh, the construction contracts as outlined in the memo from Lou to Kevin, dated January 8th. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Karen, seconded by Larry. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, one other bid item uh, of finance this evening. There is a uh, uh, cooperative custodial bid. May we have a motion, please, to approve the bid for uh, custodial supplies? So moved. Second. Moved by Andrea and seconded by Larry. Again, this is a cooperative <laughs> bid, as we always talk about, more, frequently talk about our cooperative bidding through the BOCES II purchasing agent. Uh, this involves custodial supplies. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. A very short consent agenda this evening. A motion, please, to approve. So moved. Second. A move by Karen and seconded by Andrea. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, other matters uh, for discussion or follow-up by the board or uh, from Dr. McGowan. I, I do have one item I want to bring up. Um, you'll all recall um, that at our December meeting, we received we had a presentation from uh, leaders from the Climate Club at Brighton High School, and also the Climate Club has sent us material over a period of time uh, now regarding uh, a couple of different areas of interest and concern that we discussed with them or, or actually took under advisement that evening. And I wanted to, um, I talked to Dr. McGowan at our agenda setting meeting and they had uh, provided us material and 
we've all read through that and, and, and continue to do that and update us. Uh, one of them, uh, one of the specific things was around a climate resolution, uh, but also a uh, request to develop a climate action plan for the district. And so I had talked to Kevin at our agenda meeting, and I wanted to uh, bring it up here this evening, uh, thinking that the way to move forward on that, uh, first of all, thank them. Uh, the work that the students have put together on this, and I understand that uh, they've also talked with members of the uh, Monroe County Legislature uh, around this very important subject and topic. But to move things forward, we thought that maybe moving a request into our <coughs> Environment Committee, uh, the District Environment Committee, around what a climate action plan could look like for the district, um, multiple options to that, uh, how we would go about uh, structuring, designing, and planning and implementing. So uh, we don't need it. It's not a formal agenda item. It's more of a request. But uh, if anybody has any further thoughts on that. I sit on the District Environmental Committee with um, Lou. That's run by, headed by Lou. Um, and I think it's the perfect place to begin to develop um, that kind of work. That's what the committee is for. Right, that's right what the committee is for. The it's committee. the work the committee has already started to do to, to look down that path. And I think that the experts there are, are, are that's a great team to lead us. Okay, there. great. Well, I appreciate that. And you I, thought, I thought the kids did, you know, just to reiterate, did an excellent job presenting. And, uh, you know, another example of kids leading. To a Absolutely. Great place. Mm -hmm. and so I'm really excited to hear the environmental community's perspective on the next steps that we could take. Really good, actionable steps, respectful of their work, but what they're after, which is improving this outcome. Great. Thanks. So if everybody's in agreement on that, we'll put that into sure. uh, Lou, and we had touched base with Lou on that, and the environmental committee, district-wide committee agenda, and begin begin that process there. Report back out at at some time to the board, and uh, we'll look at further action then. So, great. Uh, board members, any other items of business this evening? Does anybody have anything to bring up? Nothing going? Any further? All right, then, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, prior to that, I do remind folks that January 22nd is our next scheduled Board of Education meeting in this room, 7 p.m. And it also is the beginning of the formalized budget season, so we will begin with uh, some yeah. budget. But, which, actually, budget, we know yeah. that. But, Technically, it's on the list as a budget review meeting also. So we'll begin bringing out more of the details that are involved in our very specific budget that will eventually be, be uh, proposed by the board and adopted, hopefully, by the community. So having said that, uh, a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Moved by Larry and seconded by Karen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. 